Hello, and welcome to Seriously Pointless Conversations about Cold Podcasts where myself and a few of my friends get together and discuss nerdy things. Just a reminder, if you like what you're listening to, please subscribe to Seriously Pointless Conversations YouTube channel, or you can find us on your favorite podcasting apps. Thank you for your support. Without you, none of this would be possible. Thanks for coming by. Now let's get into the episode. Hi, and welcome to Seriously Pointless Conversations About Culture, your seriously pointless podcast that covers all your wonderful geek and nerdy information that is probably from a decade ago. Um, <laughs> my, I'm your host, David, and I, today I'm joined by uh, Kelly. Hello. And I am joined by James. Hi, hey. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good. It's a rainy, dreary, no good day today. Yeah, I don't know how the rest of you guys are feeling. Um, it's that time of year again where it just the whole weather changes, and it's either you're having a really you're having a nice lazy day or a really crappy day. It's like, am I actually sick today, or is it just colder than it was <laughs> yesterday? It's exactly how I was feeling. <laughs> I got up this morning. The last couple of days I've gotten up, and I'm just like, man, I don't want to get out of bed. It's nice and warm in my bed. It's crappy outside. I'm just yeah, it, yeah. That was it was, exactly it this morning. Yes. It's like my motivation to do anything is. Is gone. <laughs> That's how I was feeling today too, and I was like, "Man, but I have to do something today." So, but anyways, if you guys are feeling like we are, and you're just sitting there listening to our podcast, <laughs> that's a great way to spend it. Continue to do so. Exactly. We have at least one good way to spend a very no good day. That's right. Sitting there, playing some video games, enjoying yourself, just being lazy. Um, but so, uh, if you guys haven't uh, heard Kelly before, this is her first time on the show today. Um, she is joining us because she is a, a little bit of more of an expert than I am. <laughs> I'd say that I could say expert. Um, <laughs> she played probably about a little bit more than I have recently. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, World of Warcraft, um, which the vanilla version, <laughs> classic, yes. classic vanilla or uh, World of Warcraft classic. We'll do that. Um, and they're here because they've recently been playing the classic version, and I have been on hiatus for probably the last five years of my life. <laughs> Uh, so they're, they're here to provide some insights in the newer things. The game is calling you back, Dave. Yes. You're never going to get me. You're never going to get me to go. We need um, another DPS to have yeah, a five-man We've group. been trying. No. We have a four-man. No. We need a five. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I have things I need to do. It's like a... It's like a it's like a heroin junkie that just is like I can I can be I can stop I don't need it. You can stop any time. Just play one night. That's what they say about Magic: The Gathering too, and that never works we out. We just did that last night. Exactly, actually. exactly. <laughs> See, you give it up for a little bit, and you get a little taste, and you'll come back. You'll we, be we, doing we drafts draft, again. We drafted last night, actually. Too. We did. <laughs> It never ends, man. So uh, before we get into the topic today, guys, we're going to do something new we haven't tried before. Um, we're going to go around and do a little update on like what everybody's playing, um, just a kind of quick little short segment. And we want to hear from you guys as well uh, after uh, in the comment sections um, and any of the social media pages. Tell us what you guys are playing because we want to know because this will give us topics to talk about, things that you're interested in. Um, let's start with, uh, Kelly, what are you, uh, what are you into right now? Uh, right now I've been playing a lot of WoW, a lot of WoW that's, Classic, that's, that's been my big thing, but we've been kind of leveling as a group, so whenever the group can't get on, then, uh, there's not a whole lot we can do, because you have to kind of stay as a group yeah, when you're we going will, up like that. we will learn about that shortly <laughs> yeah. from the, from the script, um, so. Um, that, uh. Binding of Isaac is mm. one of my favorites. Pour one out. Pour one out for Isaac. It's so good. <laughs> it, it, so is, it is that's very a, good. That's a, um, definitely a lead into some other possible podcasts that yeah. we're going to be doing in the future. I've been playing a lot of Binding of Isaac lately, too. I'm trying to get, like... I'm trying to 100% the game. I was going to ask that. Before the new one to... comes out. And it You're is... a brave soul. Are you helping him out with this? I, I, no. I'm doing in the background. <laughs> I've been doing. I've been playing I, I mean, the Forgotten this morning, trying to beat Ultra Greedy or Mode with the Forgotten. And oh my God. you know, I I did the Super Satan and Hush and all his other completion marks yesterday, and that wasn't so bad. But Greedier Mode is just killing me today. He's I can't just do it. too impatient. <laughs> oh whatever. She's calling you out hardcore. <laughs> that is great. That sounds like some Jack oh, we, video. We maybe. Do. We do that. Yeah. That's okay. That's yeah. what you need to do. That's that's how you know your couple strength is strong. That is true. No, what usually happens whenever we play with each other 
is while I do a seated run against each other. Ooh, that's fun. I will blow way ahead of her, and I'll be destroying the game, and I'll get to the point where, like, I'm doing so good, I'm going to show off. Mm. And then I'll go and try and flex you, on... You, you, you be, you're the... You're the one once. Uh, yeah, because I'll go and try and flex on Hush or one of the super bosses, and I'll die. And then she'll actually finish the game, like, an hour and a half after me. <laughs> so she's the tortoise and you're the hare. Yes, okay. exactly. She always finishes, but you can't. So, okay, got it. I, I would have finished if I hadn't, you know, done something stupid like... <laughs> oh, well. It's not that's, important. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Man, this is... I didn't know it was going to turn into couples counseling on the show. It's good stuff. I love it. So further into that, um, we're going into what uh, cup, what you guys do as a couple. So wow, guys, um, mm -hmm. wow, wow. Um, so if you guys have never heard of, of uh, World of Warcraft, it's affectionately considered uh, called WoW. That's the acronym for it. World of Warcraft. Fall out from under the rock you've been living under. <laughs> I know. If you guys ever heard of WoW, um, one, I, I don't. I feel a little sad for you because it is. To be fair, it, during its during my time playing it, it was definitely my crack for a I mean, long time. It was the game for a long time. Oh yeah, and I, when I get down into the some of the stats about like subscriptor or subscriptions and things yeah. like that, they were into. They were a powerhouse, dude. Even now, there's still a huge market of the MMORPGs. Mm -hmm. And I feel like WoW Classic has really revitalized it for me. Which, I, I don't find the retail version to be nearly as much fun. No, so we can get into that a little bit, but it, it definitely has... I definitely dropped off because of that stuff. It, it definitely, yeah. we're, like, we're going to get into those kind of, some of those reactions a little bit. But I definitely, I definitely kind of did the same thing. I dropped off because of some of the expansions and just the commercialization of it, and it mm -hmm. just really bogged me down a little bit. But yeah. but as opposed to starting on a downer, <laughs> let's that, start on an upper. Let's start on an upper. So, how did you guys actually get into uh, Wow? Let's start with Kelly. Uh, well, I got in it through James. He's the one when we were dating. He wanted me to try it out, and so uh, I uh, tried yeah. it out. As any good gamer should. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, so that's that's. That's a great way to start. I mean, so I know a ton of people that have done that. Um, even our friends Zach and Tara, they, mm -hmm. they got into it like that. You know? mm -hmm. And yeah. I know Jackie wouldn't come within 10 feet of it. She thought it was weird, but <laughs> she's like, you spend hours a day on this thing? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Is there I mean, a problem? She's like, there's outside. And like, how would I go to sleep at night if I didn't get 10 ranks of fishing before bedtime? Valid, valid point. <laughs> I have to I have to put some sort of justification on my life. Well, so. we were looking into it because we were in a long distance relationship and it was an easy way to do something together. That is very true. Like in the evening for a couple of hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with the recruiter friend thing, you got like three hundred percent experience or something ridiculous for a month. That's pretty cool. Actually. It was it was you would level so fast that you had to, you know, abandon most of the quests you started. Like we if I were doing it again, we should have just ground dungeons, but that's okay. Anyway. <laughs> but that's that's really interesting. So so did you so obviously you got her into it. I did. So when did you start playing? I've been trying to remember that. I know like our whole friend group kind of started at the same time. Yeah. I can't remember who got it first. I honestly don't remember either. I know so kind of going off that a little bit. I know I started playing in college. I did too. Freshman years when I ever started playing because I vividly remember skipping several classes because I had to do raids. <laughs> And almost failed a couple of classes, so <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, that that was yeah. Jackie can tell you all about that, but I know. Um, so I remember, um, I believe Cole, Tim, and I don't know if Chris Sire played it with us, but I know Cole and Tim definitely Cole played and Tim it. Definitely did. I know you definitely did. I'm thinking for some reason I keep thinking that Cole got in got us into it. I want to think he did because I remember going over to that apartment you guys had. Mm -hmm. Or that they had rather, yeah, they had, and uh, and all sitting together. I remember installing the game that day, so I think it was Cole or Tim that started. Because it. because going kind of going into the the gameplay a little bit, the during that time, I don't know if they still do or not. They you could play for free for like was it thirty days at the time? Or they had like a thirty week? day trial. It had a level limit on it too. Like you couldn't yeah, get further than like, level was like, it five or ten or like, fifteen like or something. It wasn't, or something. It wasn't very high. Yeah, I remember that. So. But yeah, so you could at least play it that far and 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 try it out at least. So that was mm -hmm. so I just I remember doing that and just going in and making like 
I bet we made like 10 different characters because we got capped and we were playing it so much. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think I broke down and started playing it, paying the subscription for it. And my mom was like, why are you spending $25, $20, $25 a month for this or whatever it was? Was it 20? I thought it was like 15. Is it 15? I can't remember. I think it's 15. I couldn't remember how much it was. I just remember it being... That's why I pay now. (laughs) It was was a lot for the time for being a college kid. Exactly. For a college kid, it's like, especially at the wages at the time, that's like, that was two or three hours of work. Well, I mean, you guys remember like working in, you know, uh, whatever fast food joint it was. Exactly. And, it, and you're only making like eight bucks, seven bucks an hour. Hey, that's before yeah. Uncle Sam takes his cut. I mean, yeah, I know. Yeah. And like 15 bucks a month was like three hours of your life that you're putting into the head. I know. And you're just like, <laughs> and you're sitting there flipping burgers. You're like, I can play WoW this week. I can play WoW this week. Yes. You're just like flipping. You're like, this is great. <laughs> And now my mom was like, shouldn't you be paying for your insurance? And I was like, yeah, I paid for my insurance. She's like, you didn't last month. <laughs> Crap, maybe I should do that. So. She paid for your wild count. That's right. Yeah, that's how you know it's a problem at that point. So so obviously, like I said, we we, we started playing early on. Um, so I'm trying to remember, when did we start college? 2006? I want to say we started like halfway or three-fourths of the way through Classic. Cause yeah. It so, was... So by that time, it had only been out for a couple of years. Maybe it had been out for like a year or something. It wasn't yeah. that old. I know that we started before on Courage because mm-hmm. I remember the Corrupted Blood event mm-hmm. happening whenever we were playing. So I don't know when exactly it was then. So because what Classic was about two years in. Two yeah, years, two, two years. years it was two years in. So yeah. um, so kind of going building off that a little bit. The this was actually the fourth mm-hmm. game that Blizzard has re- had released in the Warcraft series. So you mm-hmm. remember they had Warcraft. Warcraft 2, um, Orcs and Humans, I think that's what it was, yes. or, or Orcs and, but it was, that was the one so where it was like, that. it was like pirate themed. You remember that? It was and Warcraft 2, yeah. That was, that was bizarre. Um, and they had the third one, which is the, it, it was, that's where a lot of the, uh, the modeling engine is. Have you ever played more Warcraft 3, Kelly? Mm-mm. It's where so, I, I felt like the story really took off at that point. Oh yeah, they In terms really... of like depth of the world and a lot of the characters you see in Classic WoW. Well. Anyway, I felt like Warcraft 3 was where a lot of like the big story elements took off mm-hmm. so i want to say destruction of the sun well that was warcraft 2 wasn't it i maybe i'd have to look into it again because i like i said i only played a little bit of warcraft 2 i played a lot of one uh or the original warcraft and mm-hmm. then warcraft 3 i think you guys played a little bit more of 2 than i did <sighs> I know we played three a lot together. Yeah, we did. Because I remember we especially like did the hero mode thing a bunch. Because that's where they they so that's like one of those things that they have in almost every game now is they have uh, you have your build you build up your army with an RTS, but you have like a hero character mm-hmm. and you can play it. Which that's actually kind of something they pulled. I think that a lot of play things like um, uh, not mo like MOBAs pulled. Yeah. That, that, so they have those hero characters now that you can play and they have special skills and things like that. And you kind of have that, which is kind of where you get the, um... And I feel the... like that's how MOBAs got started, when it was like, you know, a hero character only mode. Uh, I don't know the history of it, but I'm, I'm betting it was a... That's, a that's something we can get into. I'm betting it was so, a hack Yeah, how do these this games differ from the the open world one? Like, what's... what's oh, yeah, so part? it's basically... It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's an RTS, is what it is. So it's... Sorry, guys. No, we, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an RTS, which is a real-time strategy... So it's a lot different than the MMORPG, which if you don't know what that means, it stands for Massive Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. Mm-hmm. And it, so instead of being RTS, which is real-time strategy, where you control, you're one person controlling many different units, uh, you are actually one person controlling one character, mm-hmm. and you interact with the world. So... It's definitely got that first, it's more of a, yeah, it's not a first person view, it's got a third person view on it, and you basically run around, you interact with the world to try and level up your character, and you have skills and all kinds of other things, we're going to mm-hmm. get into it a little bit more, but, but that's, if that's why it, it diff, it's, it's, it's a huge departure from the original uh, mm-hmm. Warcraft series. So, which is why I think it made it so popular, honestly. Well, and that's one thing I like about the original Classic WoW is it has a feel like you're just another unit. Yeah. Like, you have this, like, whole boot camp section in most of the starting zones. Yep. And it's like, hey, Orc, you're a new warrior or whatever. Go out and kill a dozen pigs. Have fun. You're like, what? <laughs> pigs? What do those pigs ever do to you? And it's like a... they're they're not it's not like the more modern game style where they're like addressing you as a prophesied hero from day one. Yes. 
No, yeah. it's no, like, you're hey, you're grunted. I am far above you. You're part of the horde or part of the alliance. You know, it's just like, it's basic. I'm feeling too lazy to go pick the apples off that cactus. You should go do that for me. Yep, that's exactly And afterwards, it's like, here's three copper coins. Don't spend it all in one place. That is za- exactly <laughs> true. So the font, so like I said, the, this this whole idea of, came from uh, Blizzard Entertainment. I don't know if you guys, if anybody knows who they are, but you guys will probably know. Um, they're actually owned by Activision now. Boom. But... It happens, you know. Big companies that make lots of money, they get act, you know, they get bought up. It's kind of like with Bethesda recently. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm upset about the Activision merger, but I think I'm not alone in that. <laughs> I don't think anybody's alone. You're never, nobody's completely happy with I'm it. I'm just but. concerned because Blizzard's been the company that made consistently, you know, ten out of ten games, and I'm worried that's not going to be the case. Anymore. I'm starting to see that a little bit with Diablo three, which was kind of my bread and butter for a little bit I, too. Okay, I know that's not the topic of our video, but Diablo 3 for me was disappointing. I it know, was. I know a lot of people really loved it. I know it's, by all accounts, a solid game. Mm-hmm. But if you compare it to, like, Diablo 2, it's it's a different game. It, did, it didn't feel like a Diablo it's game. It's very game. much more emphasizing the MMO portions of stuff. So. It does. Which, we can talk about Blizzard as a company later on a later date, yeah, but yeah. It's, it, is, it is so... As opposed to, kind of like, backing up a little bit on that... That company that, you know, obviously Blizzard, as opposed to what it is now, what it was then, was definitely, a, it was it was still a large company, um, mm-hmm. and it had a, quite a large amount of people uh, helping develop this game, um, but in retrospect, you think about it, it took them, so I was reading up on this, it took them around four to five years just to develop the mm-hmm. game, and of a team that big, that's a long time for, for a group of people that it's still, I mean, they had at least... 100, I think they had 100 people working for them, maybe. It was. Time. It was a huge team for the time, and I know the, the server infrastructure was incredibly expensive, and this was yeah. not the first MMO, but early on in the MMO cycle of things, and mm-hmm. I know that they dramatically underestimated how much server they would need. No, oh, absolutely. So, you know, like, launch day was apparently... Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't around for the original launch day, but I'm told it was neither a was, Neither was I. So, I mean, I can only imagine how it was. So, um... I did yeah, do launch day for Classic it, Well. Yeah, and that was, we did do launch day for Classic. That was, that pretty, was, bad, that was but, pretty bad, too. But by all accounts, was much better than the original launch day. <laughs> Ooh, that's... Yeah, I, I wouldn't what I got, wouldn't want to have gotten into that at all, but we, it's... We stood in line for hours for, like, a quest mob. Yeah, yeah we formed a line. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and once you got to the front, you formed a group, so you could all do the quests together. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting flashbacks <laughs> a little bit of other games, and I just, yeah, negative. Uh, that's, that is not something I would want to have got into, but it's, anyways, <laughs> that was, I, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it, because it just Anyway, me. it was, it was a big, it was one of the first, like, AAA MMOs. It really was, it was so it set thing. it set the standard. It was there was a lot of hype for for, it too. for yeah. So between that four to five year period, they literally the the first day or the first year that they announced it, they were starting to hype it up because I remember seeing trailers and stuff for it, and I'm like, well, what there is were trailers. This? There were trailers in movie theaters. I it, mean, it, that, 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 that cinematic of, yeah. classic WoW trailer was everywhere. Like, when's the when's the last time you saw a, a game trailer in a movie? Theater Kelly. I mean, it's like never. I mean, I remember a while back in the day. I remember Manjora's Mask getting a yeah. movie trailer. That's the only two I remember. Yeah, and that was usually like in things like um, I mean, because like VHS, maybe I saw a trailer for maybe it. in VHS. But this was like in theater. I mean, oh, I don't remember that. I don't yeah, remember I, that. I saw it in theater. I'm gonna have to look that up. So then again, my parents didn't take me to the movie theater because they didn't love me. Aww. I know. I have a poor. I had a poor childhood. Negative, not at all. I had a very nice childhood. Don't let anybody tell you differently. So, um, so obviously, like I said, it took them, you know, the four to five year period to try and get this game uh, off the ground. But it also was that they, the fact they made their own engine, which is what they used from Warcraft Three, which is why we brought it up earlier, to uh, build the architecture around this game. Um, and so you had this big three D style. That's so I'm assuming that's why they made Warcraft 3 the way they did because they're like if we can make a closed world game using this engine maybe it's possible to make something big like this where each character can yeah. can have their own little character in there which I mean if they did that's a huge that's huge foresight but that's why these guys get paid millions of dollars well, and, I'm, and I'm told that you know and uh 
just apocryphal stuff that the team kind of characterized themselves as like frustrated storytellers. Thank you. And they had gotten tired of the limitations of the RTS genre and they wanted to show this big world off that they've been cooking and that's kind of what yeah. led to WoW. Yeah. So I've that's a great that's a great idea because so many artists have come that way and have pushed through to try to create something because they get bored and they get stale and they get stagnant and they're mm. like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And that's just kind of an interesting kind of idea because I mean, I don't know how many times you guys have felt like that and you're just like i gotta break through to do something else so yeah but but anyway so they they built the foundation on, on this game on that engine and they knew they were gonna have to have a subscription service which is what mm. everyone knows it for today it's a continual revenue service that you pay uh, monthly dues for but it also provides added benefits as opposed to just buying a 60 dollars game and never getting any updates mm. for it or maybe a few updates for a year and then they just stop you have continuously there there continue it allowed the developers to improve provide improvements throughout the entire life of the game which they still even do for the, the main version which and, and this was every a, month right yeah and this was a very new concept for the time oh yes yeah, a subscription service i mean mm-hmm. this was in the day when you bought the game and it was yours forever they might release a patch now and then yeah but so, I mean, they, did, they didn't nickel and dime you on expansion packs. There nope. wasn't season passes. There wasn't, you know, pay an extra two bucks to unlock, you know, the Angel Wing skin or something. I mean, it was... Well, it's, we can get into that a little bit later. Which, <laughs> well, it, it's, it's kind of related to the dark times of WoW. But... Yeah, the dark times. The, the dark ages, as it were. So, but like I said, so they, they really kind of wanted to focus on the subscription service because obviously as a company, they saw two different things here probably. They saw that, you know, one, it's a it's a steady stream of income if anybody even wants to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, they, it would provide them that steady stream of income to provide these uh, monthly improvements and benefits for the player. Yeah. And so it was a trade-off, and it was, which, which is, it's a nice thing to have, which is kind of what a lot of these um, other subscription-based services like, uh, and media companies have done, like uh, Amazon, Netflix, and things like that. They took some of these models, which they had kind of already kind of started, which I don't know which one came first, but they've really run it full tilt now. Like they have, everybody has subscription service this, subscription service that, you know? Yeah, I think what EverQuest and RuneScape both predated WoW, I think. And yes, they both had they a subscription did. service. Yeah, but, so it was, but it was super minor. It was only like, it wasn't very much. It was, it? I think it was less, but yeah. I think that's where they were building that model But off you also of. had substantially fewer people on RuneScape and. And EverQuest. Was it EverQuest? Uh, EverQuest was a serious contender back in the day, and it, it kind of lost the war, but I know when it came out, it was as big as WoW was initially. Yeah, so... EverQuest was huge. So, kind of going I on... Ne- I never played that one, but... You know, so, kind of going off that, here here's some, um, just some stats, uh, just to kind of think about how big it was initially. So, how... how just roughly, how, how, how many people do you think initially subscribed, uh, mm-hmm. Kelly? I'm just curious. Um... By 2008, let's just say 2008. 2008. Four year, four, so six years after its inception. Six years after it was out, yeah. um, several million. <laughs> Way to keep it generic. I like it. <laughs> That's plain and safe. That's good. I like it. So, so you're looking at roughly, they said it was roughly around 10 million subscribers wow. worldwide. So you had around 2 million in Europe, obviously 2.5 in North America, and um, the biggest market, which is 5.5, is Asia. Yes. Yeah. Which... They I had still no, have a big market there. Oh god, yeah. So yeah, they have a weird, weird way they 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 set up the subscription service over there. And I'm not going to get into that. I I watched a video on it, a full like 15 minute video. They had to explain like who takes 15 minutes to explain the subscription I, service I've in been Asia. Told the some of the, a lot of the Asian governments have very specific requirements yes. about what can or can't be in oh the cost of the game. Don't get me started on the Chinese version of it. Oh it's man, ridiculous. It that's that's like their that's their biggest market now is the Chinese uh, government or the Chinese uh, country of China. Sorry, oh, I should say the Republic of China. Republic, quote. And we're gonna get into that. <laughs> they can and will nope. come after you. <laughs> no, you don't say. <laughs> this is the same government that personally called out the state of Missouri. Yes, that's right. Don't six come, or eight months ago. Don't come after me, Pooh Bear. Leave me alone. <laughs> Anyways, um, if nobody got that joke, it's fine. Leave me alone. Um, so it, it was so uh, heavily invested in in such a short amount of time. That you've just seen a sequel after sequel uh, come out in 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 the uh, market. I mean, how many how many expansions have they had, James? Do you know? Um, At least five. Five or six, because what? 
because we played Wrath of the Lich King. That was, was that the first one? No, no, no. no. Was it was it Burning Crusade? Burning Crusade, Burning Crusade Wrath of the Lich King. And I know the first game two. was just ramping up and up exponentially after yes. that point. And after that, Cataclysm came out, which is where I stopped playing. So did I. And then, and then there's the Panda there was Miss, one. There was the Panda Miss one. Pandaria. I don't know. I say there was at least two more after that. Yeah, I think there was a couple more. There was another one. Oh my god, that's awful! I cannot remember. It was like Legion or something like that. It was like a, a demon themed one. Yeah, and then I, there I'm... was the one that is current right now. Okay, so it goes. Uh, that's not right. That's I want to have them in order. Stupid Google. Um, <laughs> so when in doubt, folks, go to Wikipedia. Uh, I'm gonna plug them for you. There you go. So it's in I don't, I don't think Wikipedia needs us to plug them. No, no I don't. I don't think so either. So in order, uh, you have Burning Crusade, La- Wrath of the Lich King, Cataclysm, Miss of Pandaria, Pandaria. I'm gonna do that. One. Warlords of Draenor, which I didn't even know that one came out. Uh, Iron Legion, Battle for Azeroth, and then the newest one's going to be coming out here pretty soon pretty is soon, yeah. Shadowlands. Mm-hmm. I have some um, trailers for that. I know. And so I guess, I'm looking at this, did they, did they drop the level cap, I guess? they That was part of their big announcement was they are changing the level cap back down. They're, they're compressing the experience now. So you're mm-hmm. going to do a starting zone for one of your, for your, whatever your race is. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to select an expansion pack, and you will play in that expansion pack up till like level 50, I think. And mm-hmm. then you'll go to the new expansion pack area, of the Shadowlands, and you'll do 50 to 60 to level cap there. God, that that has got to be a super duper long grind if it's if only 10 levels. They're really well, and, and so I know because previously their level cap had gone up by like 10 levels every expansion. Yeah, pack. that's quite and about what it was. Yeah. It had gotten to where people wanting to break into the game had such a long grind through so much dead content that no one wanted to do it. Which I can understand a little bit, so... Well, but they are rewriting old characters back to the low levels, and it's really messing with people. Oh, mentioning mentioning snafus. Yeah. <laughs> I can only messing imagine. A lot of the YouTubers who had early access to the Shadowlands expansion, something bizarre happened to their accounts, and a lot of their characters got reverted to, like, four patches ago. But just random <laughs> pat- patches. Like, it doesn't make... Like, there's that is, no that's a huge part like, Characters they've been the playing... They, they got them fixed, thankfully, and I have no idea what happened. Like, I wouldn't that's think... A, that that's, a, that's a monolithic well, like, issue. Well, if I just even have this data like why is it even there <laughs> it's a question but anyway that, that's that's blizzard being blizzard no, not the point well that's, <laughs> that's just such a huge company but anyway so like i was saying though as you can tell by just the, the series of content that we've talked about so far that's the reason why they had such a huge amount of subscribers in just a short amount of time so six years or 2002 no it was a 2004 we came out in 2004 into 2008 um, so 10 million people in four years yeah, is ridiculous. I think, like, uh, I think Wrath of the Lich King was peak wow in terms of subscriber count. Absolutely. Which we'll, we'll get into like the dipping numbers a little bit later, but obviously there's a reason behind why they, they, they definitely, that people flock to it so much. It's, mm-hmm. it's, and it Absolutely. was just the simple, the gameplay. There was nothing like this no. in terms of scope or... Uh, replayability. I mean, you had you had Evercra- EverQuest, yeah. and and, and it was Ru- such and a Ru- huge Ru- world with so many different things to do in it. Mm-hmm. And I know we've mentioned this before, but this was still like in the pre game, the, the pre game guide series era of things. And so having such a big world with so much to explore, yeah. I mean, there was just this is almost what like, this is what you would call like consider maybe the um, the adolescent phase of the internet, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, there was a lot of pages out there. I mean, there was, you could look up the quests and stuff, and you could look up, you know, drop tables, but there wasn't these in game <laughs> add ons that point you to Not quests like and now. stuff. Yeah, I do. I was. At best, you could look up a map and you could find it. Yeah, I remember, so I took, I remember taking a break between uh, Cataclysm. Was it Cataclysm and the last one? Yeah, between Wrath of the, Wrath of the Lich King and Cataclysm. And I remember jumping, it was about a year mm-hmm. I took a break off in there. And I remember jumping back in. And that's when people had really started like hitting in those mods. Oh yeah, yes. now you can like an yes. add-on like Questy, which actually makes it much easier because it's it'll. So much easier. I was overwhelmed. To say the like least. if you like highlight a mod, it'll tell you if it drops one of your quest items. Like if you pull up your mini map, they're all marked. All the objectives. See, are See, that is marked. amazing. And so that's it's a, it's a different way to play the game. It it's not you, the same it, as it was. It back can tell then. you like 
uh, who, what party members have. How much each one has. has and okay. what quests they have. But no, the first time around when we played this, you would read that quest description and it would say, travel to the far off land of the hinterlands and on the southern shore there'll be a bottle of wine you need to pick up for me. And you're like, one, where the hell is this place? And, and it's, <laughs> two, it's a bottle of wine. Yeah. Yeah. Which shore are you talking about? Because there's several. Yes. <laughs> so there's a huge coastline here of about, <laughs> mm, let's say, walking total of 15 minutes. <laughs> like you're going to take maybe t- spend 15 minutes trying to find this stupid bottle. Oh, and that's e- if someone else worse. didn't pick it up before you got there. Because yeah, a lot of these totally. items had 5, 10, 20 minute reach on time. The totem quest I think it was the water one, right? Oh, yeah, the water, the water toast toast quest. It's, it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> if it wasn't marked on the map, I don't know how I would have found it. So, because you have to who, swim out to so it. So anyone who's ever played the water, played a shaman in Classic WoW will remember the water totem quest. Was my first character. <laughs> I was a cow yes, shaman. I was a moomoo shaman. shaman. Yes, and so the first part of the quest sends you to the four corners of the earth, getting pieces, getting yep. water from different wells and yep. stuff for some reason. And it's hard enough to figure out where all these things are. But the final leg of the quest tells you to go to the shore and the, his- the Hillsborough Foothills, I think it was. Or, yeah. And it doesn't tell you, though, that the path does not go to the shore. No, nope. it goes no, to a mountain. It is actually completely surrounded by cross. mountains. And the only way to reach this hidden area is to swim along the coastline. Yes. Until you reach this little so hidden alcove. You, it's, not, you, it's not on the map. And if you go too far out, you'll drown in the deep water, but you are somehow supposed to know. Yeah, you're swimming on a shoreline that is just mountain, and you can't get out. And then there it is. And it's just a there it is. Troll, and the troll guy is, I guess, sitting around smoking joints or something. I mean, yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. They're, they're basically hippies. So. And he's like, here. So that, that's how you know the developers were sadomasochists. You know? So they're just like, we're going we're gonna to definitely like make this. They do little things like, oh, God. And, and I've been leveling up my priest this time, and... It's just like night and day. It's like, oh, just go to the Undercity. That was easy. Well, yeah. Where, which this is, isn't any worse. Which is why I switched over to being a priest after about, of course, this was like 60 levels in of being a shaman. I was just like, I'm done. I'm so done. <laughs> I'm just, I love, but I love the versatility of the shaman. Yeah, they're like, I, I really like my shaman. Yeah, they're, the, the they're, hybrid class tax is real in classic, though. So good. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's uh, not, it's not as fun, though. Well, it's, I, I played Druid for a long time. I mean, in classic, the originally I played Warlock, yeah, and for Wrath, I remember that, yeah. and uh, and the Outlands expansion, I that's where I did Druid, mm-hmm. and I had a blast with Druid. But I know in the original classic, there was only one or two viable trees for a lot of these classes. Not really, yeah, really and, then, really, and for shamans nothing. in particular, like Kelly can tell you, even like like five man dungeoning priest is was, a lot easier. It's so shaman. much easier. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it was shaman. just so. I remember it being so complicated, and if you didn't do it right, people would kick you from raids. Yeah, they because did. they're mad at you, and they I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm like, it's, I'm like, I, this is my first raid I've ever done, or like one of the first ones ever. I haven't been able to play with you guys ever, mm-hmm. and on top of it, I'm like learning how some of my mechanics will work properly for these raids because that's a whole another. Talking about dungeons, right? Yeah, dungeons, yeah. raids. It's all the same kind of thing. <laughs> so. Roughly, but it, it, it was... I'll tell you, bear tanking and, uh... In, uh... What's that expansion? I'm drawing a brain for it now. Which one? Which, what's the baddies you're talking about? The one in the Outlands. That is Athera? Azera? No. No, 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 the second is expansion. That, is that Burning Crusade? Yeah, Burning Crusade, yeah. Bear tanking and Burning Crusade was a blast. I could see that. Or Wrath of the Lich King, that's the second expansion. Mm-hmm. So, either one of those, but... And I, I cannot remember, um... Yeah, I just remember, I vividly remember going into that, uh, I can't remember where the Dragon Dungeon is. I can't remember what's in the first, in the first game. God, what is it called? Which one? I thought the Sunken Temple? I think it's the Sunken Temple, maybe. That's the level 51, and I feel like that's the first dungeon that just really sucks. I'm sorry, it was a Blackwing? Blackwing layer was the raid. I think that's what I was thinking of. I'm thinking of Blackwing, yeah. Because that was the first raid I ever did with, with a group, and I was just like, this is beyond my scope. <laughs> trying to play because I was a at that point I had I had gone full they basically told me they're like hey you need to be heels for our raid or for our, whatever group you were in for the mm-hmm. raid and I was just like okay and I was mostly more of like a DPS shaman and I was like mm-hmm. trying to tell them that and they're like no you need to like go and switch all your... I'm like that's not how this works does it guys and I was trying to do it and I was like no <laughs> that's, it is, was it was a bad time overall so <laughs> I know we're kind of getting in the weeds already guys but so, like, these are some of the things that really, like, made WoW 
uh, it was a party game essentially in a, weir- a weird way. So and they, that's one thing I like, and I still like about the classic WoW is there's kind of this uneven distribution of abilities. Like the yes, classes absolutely. are not the same, and that's mm-hmm. one thing that turned me off later was when it got so homogenous. Really? Yeah. Well, because it's yeah. stuff like um, druids, for example, can res you in combat, but not out of combat. But which, only once per hour. Which is bizarre. Like, yeah. uh, bears can tank, but I don't think they have a taunt in classic. Well, what's the point of tanking then? <laughs> Actually, no, wait, bears have a taunt, but they don't have an AoE threat ability. Okay. Paladins can tank, and they do AoE, th- AoE threat very well, but they don't have a taunt. Yeah, they don't have a taunt. That's... I don't know. Like the, the Horde has shamans and totems, and the yeah. Alliance has easy mode paladins with their threat reducing. That's right, buffs. they do. I, it's my, that was my only Alliance character as a boo, paladin. Boo Alliance. <laughs> For the Horde! That's, so I have a t shirt upstairs that you've probably seen me wear it. That was the shirt I wore every single time I'd go over to like Tim or Cole's to play WoW. And mm-hmm. they're like, Do you ever watch that thing? And I'm like, Maybe. <laughs> you don't know. Yes. I was like, I'm also in college. I don't know how to watch. I don't know how to watch clothes. So, <laughs> Blizzard really kind of getting back into the the meat of things. The, the Blizzard really wanted to focus on not only was it a subscription service, but making sure that this open world uh, that they made would basically be allowed to let let the players do anything they want. Because mm-hmm. in the game. You just don't have to do the quests. Oh, yeah. No. You can run around and kill bunny rabbits and pigs yes. for a time to level up. I have done that, yes. <laughs> which, which, I was going to say, we did that, and they actually make fun of it in the South Park episode. They go around and they kill... Do you, have you ever seen Make Love Not Warcraft? Of course. So, you remember the part where they go around where, like, the bad guy, the one they guy... They do nothing but kill boars in the forest to level 60. To, which... to level 60, and I'm like, that's impossible. I mean, it is possible, but... Yeah, it no, would no, be, no, if you keep finding out, more powerful so boars... <laughs> But I was just like... Some guy did do that. It is just barely possible to level 1 to 60 on pigs oh alone. God, that's insane. But you right? have to like carefully go through the zones. But anyway. So it's, and that's the kind of thing but that... Yeah, Make Love That Warcraft was great. I think Blizzard made fun of themselves too. I remember yeah. one of the BlizzCons had a, a section where you could fight Hogger as a raid boss. They did a forty man raid on Hogger. That's cool. I would be I would the true, the true boss of Wild. That's guy. how you know they they're, they're they're that's why they're pretty that's why back then I was like, Blizzard, you get you guys you get it, you know, you're nerds just like everyone else and you're enjoying the making fun of it, you know that you Oh yeah. I mean like the Flintlock comic series was huge and they actually included him in the yeah. Wrath of the Lich King. There was a Flintlock character yeah. wandering around. <laughs> I mean, a, a lot of things made their way in the characters in the game. Like, the heck, there was the He-Man characters. I know. And it, just, it just shows at how much like it's really kind of ebbed into the culture of mm-hmm. nerddom a little bit. Yeah, it didn't take itself too seriously. It was good. which is which is great. So, but so kind of going into that a little bit. So that the reason it was just so it was so big, they had to kind of accommodate some of these things. So. Obviously, you everyone know. I know you guys know the different types of servers, and they have mm-hmm. them broken yes. out into mm-hmm. the different regions. Um, so, to let everybody know, they have two separate types of basic uh, servers, is what they call it in the original games. They have normal and RP, uh, which is role playing. So, if you just wanted to go around and, and focus on defeating monsters, completing quests, and player and PvP, which is player versus player fights, and role playing was optional. That was for normal servers. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're a normie, you just wanted to go around and kill things and have fun with your friends. There you go. If you wanted to get into the more um, theatrical of things, and doth thou <laughs> want to go on this thine quest, they had the RPG, uh, the role playing uh, servers, which I went to one once. Not gonna lie, I can't can't do that. That's hmm. me thinks thou dost protest too much. You know. It... <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyways, pulling out my uh, my Shakespeare in there a little bit, um, but uh, but yeah, I I got I dropped into one of the, the PVP not the PVP one of the PV or the RP uh, servers one time, and I was like typing stuff like I was normally was in the normal servers. Yeah, I might have gotten booted from a server. <laughs> yeah, no, those guys will get mad at you if you don't follow the naming conventions on their server for yes. different races. And it stuff. It's, was bad. People take it very serious. It actually. They have uh, in uh, retail WoW now. They have whole add-ons mm-hmm. where you can create your character and write their backstory. And other people who have the same add-on can, can pull up can it. pull up your profile and read what you've made public. So they're right basically now. just playing D and D in WoW. Yes. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, cool. It's... I got it. So <laughs> that's, that is phenomenal. So they actually even get further like broken down into the servers. So you guys obviously know you got PVE and PVP, which is player versus environment and player versus player, which is where it's at. 
Do you like player versus player? Yeah, that's the I like to play right? PvP servers, yeah. Man, you're like, a better person than I was. I feel like the, the danger of being attacked is part of the fun. It was so... I did initially like it. The thing that turned me off a little bit on it was players that were substantially higher levels than I was whenever I was just trying to start a new character. Mm -hmm. And they would just come up and be like, ha ha, stab. Because that's what they had, the mechanic they had back then was literally, it was, they didn't, you didn't initiate a combat, which I could, do they do that still? Yeah. Yeah. We have to we have to initiate combat, basically say, hey, you want a battle, no. basically? No, no, that's only that's, PvE that's, servers. That's only oh, okay. In PvP servers, you can just kill anyone you wherever just you want. Kill, no, that's what I thought. Unless, as long Unless, as you're in a contested zone. contested zone. As long as you're in a contested zone. If and, you're okay. if you're in a like horde zone, for example, alliance characters can't attack you. But horde members can attack the but alliance. But you can attack them. But once you attack them, they can fight back. Yes. Okay. You'll, you'll set your PvP flag for that So zone. if you're like a level 20 guy, you see like a level 70 alliance guy run by, just like Stand on the side. Just let them go. Just, just let them go. He's just go walking. behind a tree. Well, so now through. here's something I used to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I was a warlock, right? And so at yeah. the time, warlocks could summon a, a giant, like, meteor demon type. Yeah, pet. I remember, yeah. And um, it's a weird thing about classic WoW is you don't actually summon it as your own bound demon. You summon it as a summoned monster, mm -hmm. and then you enslave it. Yep. And so you could go to a low-level alliance area, like Garshore <laughs> or something, for example. <laughs> See where this is going. There are players who don't necessarily know what's going on, and you can just drop it in the middle of their town and walk away. And say, I have present for you. <laughs> just Another thing, it. too, is you can have a high level demon pet, like a Felguard, for example. Oh, yeah. And you don't really should get that until I think it was 40 or 50 at the time. And you could uh, just put that guy in the middle of the road in defensive mode and tell him to stay there. And low level <laughs> players who hadn't seen a high level mm. warlock yet might just attack it and get slaughtered. So that's I did called, that, that's I did that for a while, that's too. That's called a dick move right there. That was a dick move, yes. <laughs> I'm proud of you all. That was revenge, though, because you know I wasn't going to get revenge on the people <laughs> above me with real PvP gear. That's so right. I'm, I'm going to go take it out on a level 10. That's characters. right. You, you were mean to me when I started out. Now I'm mean to them. It's a cycle, James. Exactly. That's called hazing. It is. <laughs> I don't speak their language anyway. I can't hear them scream. <laughs> well, some people can type in a way so that it that you can understand it. Valid. Well, so they do that a little bit now at the time. Like at Booty Bay at, in our server, it happens all well, the time. Well, at the time, the Blizzard mods took it really seriously back then, and you could get banned for that. Attempting to translate between server factions was a big offense. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, really? Wow, I didn't know that. They let you... They It slides more now than it used to. Huh. I mean, you know... what. <laughs> I feel like it's not as bad from what I was I was looking on. It's not the the faction war isn't as bad as it was when it was initially whenever they first came out with the game. Like it was hardcore. I remember playing those first couple of years, and it's like you weren't allowed to talk to anybody on the other side. And I'm like, this is like, like real war. And I'm like, this is I mean Warcraft, but it was it was just bizarre. It was one of the genius things I think Blizzard did. Yeah. to be honest, mm -hmm. and that's one thing on, on PvP servers, for example, you can't make characters from both factions. You have to make all your characters of one faction or the other. And in that game, if you are a member of the opposite faction, whenever someone tries to te type text to you, it, the game just scrambles it. It's that's kind of cool. You literally cannot talk to members of the opposite faction in like any that. way. You can't send mail to them. You can't speak with them. The only way you can communicate is to kill each other. I oh, you know. And so it, it really created mean. this big, you know, culture of, you know, being part of the Horde, being part of the Alliance. And even to this day, you can have old grog darts like us walking around Walmart. And if you, like, walked into Walmart and just screamed for the Horde at the top of your lungs, I There's a meal, at least 15 people. That would scream back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. People who haven't played the game for a decade still have very strong feelings about what faction they were part of. I haven't played for almost a decade, and that's the way I would do. I'm, dude, this is how there's a guy at my gym, and he'll come out, and I'll, he saw me wearing my shirt. I was lifting one day, and he's just like, for the Horde! And I'm like, dude... I had no idea at all because he's this big old meathead and I had no idea just didn't even like register at all and I was just like you gotta be kidding me like, this is great and I, he was like down with the alliance and I was like and, you know, immediately like we immediately started talking I was like what was your first character and he's just like oh man I was you know assassin troll or I can't remember was it a was it, no rogue, rogue troll rogue troll, troll. I apologize he's like I was a rogue troll and I was like dude I was like you're a <laughs> so anyways but but yeah that was that was one of the things that i just remember loving coming into like just meeting the different people and the different mm -hmm. types of uh, players they were creating characters they were create and that was one of the greatest things about this game is that you could go in and you could specify uh what kind of character race mm -hmm. um 
what kind of, uh, uh, like I said, class. Um, and when, even when you get even more minute, you can do the different types of, uh, 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 what would they call it? Primary some, trade skills? Get some professions, yeah. Professions, yeah, professions. Sort of trade skills that you could even go into that make you specific to be able to, you know, improve your character. And I don't even know, did they have trade skills when they first initially started? Yes, that they, was on launch. Okay, I couldn't remember if it was on launch or something like that, but I know they've added, subs, uh, you know, subsequent trade skills. They've added uh, a couple trade more skills. trade skills. I think uh, jewel crafting yep. and scribing, and there's an archaeology skill everyone gets now. And Which I haven't even heard of. I haven't even tried it, no. Which, those are amazing, but... The jewel crafting and inscribing were... Inscribing, I think, was added in Cataclysm, so that was... So, like, how many... Up into this... Like, let's, let's, let's go around, Robin. Kelly, how many characters have you... Have you made? Uh, I've made three. You've made three, so what have you made? I've made a, a um, the Moon Elf Druid that I played okay. for like a month or so. That's about choice. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, this time I've been leveling my uh, Tarn Shaman. That one's um, up around 50. 50, 50 it's around 50. 50. Yeah. Right. Moomoo's for the win. Yes, <laughs> Moomoo's for the win. It's fun being called you cow all the time. <laughs> and you're like, I'm kind of mad, yeah, but I also understand why you call me this. <laughs> yes. The proper response is, I am utterly amazing. That's right. <laughs> uh, but this time to level with our, our leveling group, I'm doing a priest zombie. Hey, there you go. Priest. That is good. So what are what are your characters, James? So I'm currently, for our low-level characters we're playing right now, I've got an undead rogue that I named Zombody, which oh. I thought was great. And I'm Mrs. Zombody. <laughs> you can leave whenever you feel <laughs> so, But I was otherwise, there. I was playing a uh, Taran uh, warrior before that. That's a pretty good one, actually, because you know, mm-hmm. they, have, they have some pretty decent uh, uh, attack skills. So. Oh yeah, warriors are cool. I... I didn't play a warrior in the original WoW, mm-hmm. and I, I was wanting to do one. I gotta say, it's it's an interesting feeling playing a warrior. If you are being supported, like if you got a healer, it's great. It feels amazing. Like you can fight forever. You can just you're an absolute murder machine. If you're by yourself, it it's. <laughs> Whenever um, I remember when Tim Cole and I played, mm-hmm. I think Tim was usually heals. Cole was always played warlock He's, too. Yeah. And so he would be our DPS guy, mm-hmm. or A or AOE, whatever you feel like doing. And I was a warrior. I think I've had, I think I had an orc warrior is what yeah. I had. Which that's what I originally like, the last character I ever made though. Um, but my sham was my biggest one that I played for the longest time because you can do you can actually kind of go a little melee with your sham if you if you mm-hmm. enhancement shaman. That's what I'm doing. They are, right now. I still think that the original enhancement shaman spec was going to be a tank spec. And they just didn't. I mean, you've got a lot of the tools. Like they've got the parry yeah. talent. They've got some defensive talents. They've got shields. Mm-hmm. They've got earth shock, and they've got earth biter. So they've got threat tools. Yeah. Shamans don't have trouble keeping threat. They no, have, no, not at all. They just don't have enough defensive tools to stay alive. Yeah. And so, like, I've talked to people like even like today. It's like if you want to, you can spec out an enhancement shaman. You can take threat from the from the tanks and oh, yeah. in a raid somewhere mm-hmm. easily. It's apparently oh, not we, very we, difficult to do. We just ran a dungeon where that was a problem. We we're like, can you please uh, stop? I hate, just, I hate <laughs> low level shamans in in small dungeon groups because <laughs> they all want to use rock biter because that's their DPS thing at low levels. They haven't gotten anything better yet. Yeah, and they're like, and, I want to do damage, and none of them seem to realize that it increases their threat. Because well, once their threat gets it off, guess who's next? The healer. The healer. Yeah, healers. <laughs> healers are always the one that got to run around. So I remember that you just have to run and hide for a little bit and yes. just like sit there. And mm-hmm. then while they're while the tanks are like dying, they're screaming at you, "Heal me, heal me!" And I I'm know. just like, "I've got to. I'm gonna die." We did a dungeon yeah. a little while ago. Tank was fine. Everyone was fine. I died three times. Yeah. Happens. That's probably <laughs> right. Yeah. That's it's in my in my experience when I did play a little bit of a priest. Um, I think it was a, probably around between three and five times I die per dungeon uh, or that's, raid or that's whatever. That's really rough, but yeah. And, it, then, and see, but I wasn't very good at the heals. Yeah. I found I was much better at doing either melee or DPS kind of yeah. stuff. When I feel like the the cloth guys get squishier as you go. Yes. Very, like when you first start leveling, you're like, oh, this isn't too bad. I can tank a lot of stuff. Two hits. And, and by the time you get to level fifty or no. sixty, the gap between you and the plate guys is so big. 
But Beautiful. thankfully, I've learned the skill of when to run. Mm-hmm. Well, I it's have before to say, your tank dies. It's called situational awareness, Kelly. That's what you're say, good at. Yes. Playing a rogue now, I understand why there were such dicks back in the day. Yeah, because they like, were squishy. Uh, and I knew this stuff, but actually feeling it is one thing. Like They actually have the vanish ability, and that means that if things go south, I just hit that button and I can just walk away Sorry, from the Sorry, nin- ninja vanish. Pretty much, yeah. Like It's just <laughs> like, no, I don't need you guys. Oh my goodness! So that's, anyway. that's but that's that's like I said. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, like they said, this is that's this is why it's just one of those amazing. This is just the the amount of the of gameplay and replayability that mm-hmm. is in this. It just it that's why why I was lived on for so long as as it has. But there's a little couple of the things that they 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 added in there that really weren't. Um, they were kind of niceties, obviously. Like I said, this is a very um, uh, group centric game. You can play yes. by yourself. But they really emphasized uh, going into guilds or groups or even being just in parties to be able to, like, finish some of the quests. So, like, you guys were saying dungeons and, and, and raids. Uh, raids are essentially just dungeons but on steroids. Yeah, so, much bigger groups, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I just would get even, like, smaller. You'd get, like, multiple smaller groups. I remember sometimes, what are some of the biggest, bigger dungeons? You'd have almost, what, I mean, dungeons are five, usually five man, and then raids are 20 or 40 at the time. Yeah, so you're talking, like, five to five to eight different uh, dungeon groups, essentially, yeah, the put together. Members. And it's ridiculous. I, I remember seeing that many people at once during my first raid, and I'm like, this is a lot going on on my computer. Oh, yeah. But it is, and you're talking, like, the length of time. So a dungeon will probably take you, what? Maybe two, three hours, maybe. It, 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 um, it depends on the dungeon. So, uh, it, they vary I from like an hour to two or three. So I found that my experience playing the classic WoW now compared to playing the original vanilla WoW has yeah. been different. At the time, I agree, dungeons were usually two hour experiences yeah. plus. I think people nowadays are more gamerly than they were before. Mm-hmm. Even if they haven't played WoW before, they understand what they're supposed to be doing. The mechanics a little bit more. And yeah. so, like, we were busting through Wailing Caverns in, like, 35... That's like, not bad like, at 40, all. Like, 45 minutes, Yeah, it, it, yeah and so it's, it's really quick if no one dies. The dungeons are a lot faster now because people know what they're supposed to be doing. People, in general, are playing better specs, better leveling specs for their characters. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's and so always it's, that... uh, and people understand a little bit better what type of gear they're supposed to be taking for themselves. So there's always that initial, like, whenever they come out with the expansion or when something's new, there's always that learning that, curve, a learning curve, like hardcore. Like I don't yeah. remember if you remember. Whatever, I, think like... when we, I think originally people just didn't know what to do with an MMO yet. Exactly, and, and now it's very commonplace. Like you see, like uh, the Final Fantasy online, mm-hmm. all the and and all those other uh, big raids or big dungeons they do. They have like they they have uh, uh, scripts about exactly like you need to do X Y and Z when it does you know mm-hmm. A B and C to mm-hmm. counteract it, mm-hmm. and they it's literally like a juggling act essentially to how yeah. to keep the ball afloat. And you don't know that initially whenever you're first uh, going into these raids or dungeons, and it's especially like going into these raids. Each group has a, has a specific like task that they have to do yes. yeah. to try to give and take because you have to either pull in or pull back. And it's a lot like basically having, you know, war going against yeah. the yes. thing and basically make, making sure that you can keep everybody alive as long as possible. And so it's just, it's just, it's a whole other ball of wax that, you know, I wasn't ready for whenever I first played it. So, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, so kind of going into even more, uh, so we're going to kind of hit into the settings now of, uh, the setting. So obviously, um, just, what are some of the some of the types of settings that you guys see in 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 WoW? I know, whenever I was playing, I was always fascinated with the goblins. That's just me, though. So I like the <laughs> steampunk stuff. That's just me. The goblins are cool. They had like, the whole steampunky vibe. Very so, exactly right. do you, what do what do they have now? Because I have, I think the last one I saw uh, was the. Let's see. I'm trying to. They have a really fantasy heavy with obviously with the alliance and the undead. What yes. else do they have now? So uh, the uh, the the Eastern Kingdoms has in the northern part, yeah, where a lot of the Alliance stuff is. There's like wetlands area. There's some marshy areas. There's some big forests. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the Badlands, which has like this more kind of torn up volcanic type mm-hmm. feel. Yeah, kind of like Grand Canyon. Yeah, there's some Grand Canyony areas. Like Thousand Needles has that kind of you know Arizona. 
you know, red rot type feeling yeah. to it. So in like even inside these areas, they have like smaller alliance based like um, uh, strongholds yes, or not alliance like, or or faction based or strongholds. Yes. I apologize, or even neutral uh, yes. places. Yes, so and, and the neutral ones always scare the crap out of you. There. Why? I'm just curious. Well, well because they're they're neutral, so both factions are present. Present there. Okay. And while there are guards that will attack you if you fight someone there. Someone like a rogue, for example, can easily murder you and vanish. Yes. Stabby they're... poof disappears. Or, just, exactly. or just decide that it's worth dying to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that. I've seen Booty, people Booty do Bay that is too. The worst. Yeah, Booty Bay is by far. I Especially Booty with Bay. those that could swim. Are oh, and by fast. the way, something which I learned this way. year, which I did not know beforehand, do you know that on Booty Bay there is one night when the guards go to sleep and don't wake up? No, they get drunk. On, yep. New, on New Year's night, the guards will all become drunk in Booty Bay that is awesome. and will not fight back. So you can just murder them, or you can murder each other. And so, so going on, I learned that, that the hard way. That's something that, that, that was really <laughs> interesting. So whenever I first started playing, um, the, the the changing of the seasons of the year, they would add those. They do little special events. Yes. Oh yeah. I love that stuff, dude. And then, and it was all time stuff. They always have something new every year. Yes, and it's always a lot yeah, of fun. Halloween is great. The uh, I love Halloween. The, the Halloween it's, event I think is my favorite so, one. So and the they, Christmas event is that the one? The, isn't that the one? The Halloween one is where you have to the raid or the dungeon is uh, you have to fight as a headless horseman or somebody. Who is it? Yeah, it's like a jack o' lantern. It's like headless horseman. Yeah, and he's yeah. been in different places. I remember Scarlet Lannister graveyard. I think was the they one. Move, I they best. do move him around, but yeah, I remember playing that one. He drops some interesting loot, and it's it's just fun. Yeah, that's what I said. It's it's an excuse for you guys to get together and, and have special mounts. And that's what, uh, different mounts, different costumes, things like mm-hmm. that. And people can kind of show off the different things that they've done. And it's kind of like a badge of honor to get through mm-hmm. it all. So that was, that's another thing that really kind of set it apart. Because you didn't have that in like EVE or um, EverQuest really. You yeah. didn't have the change in the RuneScape, season. RuneScape did, but I don't know if EverQuest did or not. I don't think, honest. and I definitely, I say EVE online, but that's a freaking Starship game. And I'm not even going to get into that. That's <laughs> it's a business simulator. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's scary. I don't like it. It scares me. <laughs> it's too much there. But another thing they kind of added into that we really haven't uh, talked about. So what is your what's your hot take on the uh, the auction system? The auction house? Uh, yeah. I like the auction like house. The auction it's good. House. Even the newer versions of it? I haven't seen the newer versions yeah. of it. I've only played the current version. Yeah. <laughs> there's a reason. There's a, That's one of the big reasons. So that's one of the big reasons why I quit playing Whenever they started going to basically saying real world currency kind of translated into really? the auction house. So you can like buy gold? It was for, yeah, for a little bit there. You could buy gold to pay for items or you could even like purchase items on WoW. It was a short period that they did this. I, I didn't I mean, see that. I know, they, I know the current retail has like, you know, you can buy some skins and mounts and stuff. They, so they really, they, there's a huge amount of backlash on it. So basically, you could literally, instead of like, you know, you gain gold throughout the game doing various things, they had it set up to you could literally set up a credit card on your account. The credit card you have for your subscription service, they would just bill it. Really? To buy items. You could literally say, instead of paying the gold, I'll pay you actually in world games. That's like just play play to win. That didn't go well. Yeah. It only lasted like six months. Oh, good. I remember it. I know Diablo 3 tried to come out with a real world money auction house, and that was a disaster. And so that was their second attempt at it. They were trying to. I know there were a lot of like legal groups where people were advertising that. To so they, sell you gold outside the game. They'll do that. So that's what they do now. Because it's not illegal to go to be gold mining. Because they literally make characters like players in Asia. That's literally what they do. They have... Yeah, botting, play, botting is against terms of service. But gold farming is not. Yeah, so they will literally just spend you know hours upon hours to gold farm. And then they'll sell it all. Or in Vill- Venezuela is, is another selling the country. Selling the gold is illegal. Yeah. You get it from a lot, Absolutely, too. Absolutely, yeah. Well, and I know they've, they've tried several things to try and combat this, this, second, this uh, gold market. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was it. That was an attempt, I guess, was just to make it legally available, and people won't buy from the shady websites anymore. Yeah, but I just don't think it worked out for them, honestly. No, I, I, I think yeah, that that would ruin the game because you know. Yeah, it, and it was half it was, the game is just farming enough stuff to well, get enough gold. And that's something which other games have tried different things, like RuneScape, for example, has a thing where you can purchase a bond with real world money, and it <laughs> gives you an in-game item that renews your subscription. <laughs> And so it's kind of like buying gold, but you're not buying it directly. Which they kind of have that in WoW. It's like a token. Do they have that now too? It's a token, but it's it's more of like, 
I think it's 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 more of a subscription based type thing. Yeah. They're doing that instead, it's, as opposed to giving you gold and things like that. I don't know. They give you a subscription token, and then you can sell that on the auction house. For which I think gold. you which I think you can do that, but it's there. And so that's a little between. better because like the market gets to determine the value, but yeah. it's still it's uh, it's not great. It's definitely not great, but it, you know what? The best thing they can do is just try and tinker with the system and see if it ends up working or not. You know, but Please, for the love of God, don't ever go back to a real world money. No, it would just no. be bizarre. So it's no good. So I know we've kind of covered a lot of information. I'm going to try and speed through this a little bit, the plot, <laughs> so we can we can get out of here. Um, so just uh, let me think about the way to put this, Kelly. What do you think the plot of Wow is? <laughs> do you even know the plot of Wow? The plot of Wow, like the original games? What? Yeah, classic the, the classic, the classic rock. What is the base story of Wow? I just want to know. Oh, it's because uh, I sure as hell didn't know it. So <laughs> it involves like the orcs from another dimension that okay. are magically altered somehow to be not like orcs but intelligent, it's... and they were formerly enslaved by the humans, I believe. Okay, so this is this is partly there, and yeah. then uh, the elves like are vampire like things that they have to constantly get mana to live and okay. the various types of elves are depending on where they get that mana from okay so that, that has nothing to do with the plot but that on, on this end at least so i say really good for someone who didn't play the games or the expansion packs that's not bad yeah it's still not bad at all compared to you know some people i mean classic wild is just about the fight between the alliance yep. and the horde it's the aftermath of the previous games where they whole set up the whole thing with the sun well the sundering the sun well the orcs have ex- have escaped enslavement. There's this remnant faction of trolls that have joined up, and, and the, the humans are, are still <laughs> really from the loss of their king, and from Arthas betraying them and becoming the new lich king and running off to the northern <laughs> area, and so it's it's this embroiled oh, and the tension elf between woman is. Yeah, the un- uh, there's the free undead now who have joined the horde. The Tarin jump in, and it's this kind of tenuous piece. Which of it everyone, is. the Tarin's motivation is the one that I don't understand. Yeah, they're they're hippies. <laughs> they're they're threatened by the centaurs and the quillbores and stuff, yeah. and they join the horde for the So tension. that's kind of where I was. I was somewhere in between you guys a little bit on that. I I knew a little bit of it, but this is the official plot of World of Warcraft. Okay, let's hear it. All right, so. Uh, intent on setting it in Duradar, Thrall's Horde expanded its ranks by inviting the undead Forsaken to join Orcs, Tauren, and Trolls. Meanwhile, Dwarves, Gnomes, and the Ancient Night Elves pledged their, lo- their loyalties to the Alliance. Guided by the human kingdom of Stormwind, after Stormwind's king, Varian w- Wyron? Wyron? Yeah. Mm-hmm. mysteriously disappeared, High Lord Bolivar Fordragon served as regent, but his service was affected by the mind control of the black dragon Onyxia, who ruled in disguise as a human noblewoman. As heroes investi- investigated Onyxia's manipulations, the ancient elemental lord Ragnaros Ragnaros? Yeah, that's right. Ragnaros. Was, it wasn't, yeah. Service to endanger both the Horde and the Alliance. The heroes of the Horde and the Alliance defe- defeated Onyxia and sent Ragnaros back to the elemental plane. So that's the base plot. I would never have guessed that in a million years. Yeah, that's that's tier one reading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, cool. I'll admit, never having played Alliance characters, I was not aware. Yeah, of I was not aware of any of that. I was not aware that Nixia had disguised herself as a as a noble. No, I'd not. I, a, I knew there was a lot of killing of Nixia going on. Not at all. <laughs> and I was just like, that's this is ridiculous. <laughs> and this actually, they actually go into. Uh, a lot more of the plot for each of the the uh, raid dungeons and are the raids and the dungeons that you end up doing. Like like I said, it was Salt on Black, uh, Black Wing Lair, Rise of the Blood God, uh, Gates of Iron Courage, yeah. and then Shadow of the Necropolis. And like I said, they really dig into some of the the history of uh, of the WoW world or the WoW world of Warcraft. Um, of that whole environment. And if you guys are interested, they actually have a lot of comic books about it. Yeah. And books, even. Between the books and the comics and the mini-games, there's decades of wild yes. lore. You it can, is. You can really dig into that. It, is, it rivals Warhammer. It really mm-hmm. does. The amount of lore they have out there for this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. 
And that just goes to show that these are things, a lot of them, a lot of it started out as like fan fiction stuff that mm -hmm. people were writing. And then mm -hmm. WoW was like, that's a really good we're like gonna store. That. We're going to take that or we'll pay you for it. And, you know, mostly we'll take it. But yeah. that's, that's a whole other issue. But Terms uh, of service, sir. <laughs> uh, that is true. That's right. If it has the, one of their characters in it, they own it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's IPs for you. So yep. I've had a many an argument with my sister-in-law about that stuff. So. Don't ever have an intellectual property lawyer as a sister-in-law. So, anyway, so, um, so anyway, so like I said, if you guys feel interested in doing that kind of stuff, look up that kind of stuff and just really dig into it if it's something you're really into. Um, but so far from there, out of all that, it just goes to show that you know, WoW was is just one of the one of the, is is still one of the biggest MMORPGs or MMOs. Mm -hmm on the planet even compared to some things like um like call of duty or uh what was the other one i'm trying to think I mean, of. it's it's endured in a way that other mmos haven't i mean there's, Which, i mean you can almost call there's been it. lots of great games that have come and gone but there's a very short list of mmos that are still kicking and, after and the there's a lot decade. of franchises yeah, that have tried years. to do the same thing like the skyrim yeah. series they came oh, out with yeah, their own maybe thing. lasted like Three, four years, yeah. maybe. Yeah, the Skyrim MMO wasn't as good. No, yeah, it, but, but it they tried. They had a few games that set the lore up for the world, and then they yeah. they tried doing an open world. And so, just just for like a a just for an idea of like how well they did. So between uh, let's see, in by two thousand and six, they sold approximately one point four million copies of the base game. And that's like sixty eight sixty eight million dollars, and it was um mm -hmm. it was the third best selling computer game uh for between two thousand and two thousand and six. Mm -hmm. um, we've already talked about the subscriptions, um, but the one thing they do talk about though is after probably around they said around like two thousand and fifteen, um, they the the subscriptions started to dip a little bit. Mm -hmm. They dipped around about a one point a seven point one million. Which still is ridiculous, mm -hmm. but in recent numbers, uh, but I think it was around September of this year. They they have the numbers at around five point five because I think that's talking about. Yeah, they, they don't, don't officially publish those numbers anymore. And, they, and it's all it's all it's kind guesswork, of get, but... guesswork a little mm -hmm. bit. And even with five point five, you know, you still have them. That's they that's not even just active ones that's just accounts that are technically active but haven't been on subscribed yeah they're still subscribed so and that is just one of those crazy things that you can imagine that it, it has that many people uh still involved i think they said it's like they said um that wow has something like 80 i'm sorry no, i apologize in in Right now, they hold around probably fifty percent of the MMO part MMO RPG market. That's incredible. That is out of all the people that are playing on online. That is that is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, and is. I know we were talking about with the um, uh, China thing a little bit. Um, just guess how how much of their uh, if if China were to leave the market, guess how just roughly how many sixty percent sixty sixty yeah. percent. Uh, probably around, uh, probably about. It was more like it's like forty percent of their of their subscribers would, would just be gone. Wow, that is so. That just shows that like once we're trying to open their market or the market up to them, that was kind of ridiculous to just kind of see the sheer amount of enthusiasm they had for a while. I know it's probably mm -hmm. regulated, heavily regulated, and things like that, but it's it's really interesting. Interesting. So, and even so, um, they they have even really tried to do. Um, all kinds of things with WoW since its inception, you know, between the expansions and things like that. They actually came out with uh, tournaments for World of Warcraft. I had no idea they came out with tournaments. Have you ever seen this kind of thing, James? Uh, I mean, I know Arena was a big thing yeah, for a long time. It was probably more of a probably PvP Arena thing. what you're talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Arena was a four, sorry, 5v5 PvP matches, and they had a ranked system. It came out, I think, in Wrath, I want to say. Oh, but wow. I, know they, I know they did some Arena tournaments. And it birthed the Twinks. <sighs> Twinks, Twinks were before arenas, but mm. Battlegrounds birthed the You know, kids, we're not going to describe that on this channel. If you want to look that up for yourself, go right ahead. Just make sure you oh. have a parental filter on. So, <laughs> so twinks. twinks, definitely another meaning in there as well. Well, so. that is true. There is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to leave that alone. So just make sure mom and dad aren't watching. So anyway, so um, overall, what are your guys' kind of to sum up uh, the breadth and scope of this just massive series that we have just 
gingerly dipped our toe into yes. what what are your what are your overall feelings kelly of the whole series the whole series um i like it it's it's a lot of fun you start like oh i'm just gonna do one thing and then two hours later you found five other things that you're juggling and, never and ending doing and grocery and list. It, you meet so many interesting people mm-hmm. like even in their persona like one of my favorite moments was that uh, I don't even remember what quest we were doing, but I was struggling to beat this a couple of things, and so was an alliance person. And we're mm-hmm. like, let's just work together, <laughs> and That's we right. worked together to get through uh, this this <laughs> goal. We took what we needed, and then we just parted ways. <laughs> Hey, that was the, the escort quest in Swamp Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it's like you give him the old backslash wave and then don't kill them. And then afterwards, not only did he not kill us back, we actually he went all the way back to the beginning, waited for the guy to respawn and escorted with us, yes. too. That's really cool. Yeah. And with no communication. I mean, it's, yeah. this is cool. <laughs> that's how you know. That's that's how you know the, the the idea of a great game is whenever it's two people from the opposite side, factions that are supposed to kill each other, they just get along. Yeah, They're like you know what, we're gonna work together for this because I've been sitting here for half an hour waiting to get this done, <laughs> yeah. and you know, nobody wants to come help me. I'm gonna have the horde guys help me because they're cool. Mm-hmm. So, but what do you what do you feel about it, James? I know <sighs> I played WoW for a long time. It's a it's a really great game. I like you said, it's something you can lose yourself in. It's it's definitely got a nostalgia vibe now, but Absolutely. it's just a great game to sit and play with your buddies. Yeah, it, like and said, it's, it's hard to play with your buddies. You can you can switch things around. You can craft. You can go mm-hmm. farm. You can level. You can run some dungeons. There's just a lot of different things to do. I mean, and in the breadth and scope and kind of depth of the world is what keeps drawing you back in. I think. No, absolutely. And yeah. I think that the the players. Um, now being older and coming back to classic because definitely has changed really the tone. Changed it's things. interesting because because uh, now there's like guilds with adults with jobs, and that's that's the one where we're you mean where you I, have actual conversations with people that are like they're like get off the channel, noob, and I'm uh, like I'm I'm 35. I will say leave Baron, me alone. I will say you that. live in your mother's basement. <laughs> Shut up. I will say the Baron's chat has not changed. No, oh, okay, hasn't. good. As long as but I think that. it's more of on purpose now instead of. I don't know. I mean, I, I cracked the Chuck Norris joke and people argued about it for 15 minutes. That's true. That's so. right. <laughs> That's how you know we're getting older. When it, whenever all the dads and, and, and Lord Chuck forbid you say something about someone's mom on the Baron's chat. <laughs> don't start with me. But yeah, so I kind of go a little bit with that as well. You know, it just just the sheer amount of fun and 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 just pleasure that I've gotten out of spending time with my friends and my, you know, some family members even playing wow even though it was you know obviously it's a it's a time waste but all this is just a time waste but it's something to spend time and with your family and your friends and enjoying something that you truly love and the environment that they created was simply spectacular in my opinion so and i hope they get back to that a little bit more hopefully with the new expansion i don't know we'll see and that's like i said only time's gonna tell and if not maybe Maybe I'll dip my toe in. I'll maybe I'll grab a little, get a little bump of wow, <laughs> a classic. You can always get on Bankly. <laughs> God, you're an awful person. He, he's the treasurer of the Bank of Ovigamar. You're an awful person. <laughs> See, don't don't listen to your friends. They're all. I'm just saying that if you start up, I'll run you through RFC a couple times. God, <laughs> See, that's why you never sit down with other users, guys, is because they're like they want you to get involved with it too. So. So All right. If you get clean of a drug, you have to you have to get new friends. That's right. I'm just need to move out of the out of the state. That's what I got to do. So and never work with it, especially the internet again. But anyways, guys, I want to thank everybody for stopping by for this. That was our World of Warcraft episode. Again, if you guys are liking what you're hearing, let us know. Rate and review uh, the episode. Um, put a put a even if you don't like the 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 episode, let us know what can we improve on it. Um, we're always trying to make this better. Uh, and a better piece of work for for you guys for us um, if there's something you guys want to cover I actually put up a, um, a post on Facebook saying what's your favorite uh, uh, childhood memory of uh, nerdy uh, uh, type of uh, uh, topic IP let us know so we can try and get into something for you guys because like I said right now it's only what we're enjoying I like to hear what everybody else enjoys so we can kind of cover things because 
what we enjoyed and what you guys enjoyed are two separate different things, mm -hmm. and I just want to learn and, and discover new types of IP out there. But like I said, if you guys enjoyed what you're saying, let us know. Um, and we should be back again here in a little while for another episode, and we'll let you guys know what that is here after a while. But again, thanks for coming by. James, Kelly, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure. All right, guys. Have a good day. Bye. If you're interested in keeping up to date with new episodes on our channel, add us on any of your favorite podcasting apps, or subscribe to our YouTube channel at Seriously Pointless Conversations. If you have questions or concerns, please email us at seriouslypointlessconvo at gmail.com. We appreciate any feedback. Thank you for listening to our show.